things. Yeah, that's why Allah separated authority from honor. Not because you are in authority that you are honored. Don't be deceived. That's a test. Authority is a test like jail is a test. Surah Yusuf has a lot of tests for Yusuf. All scholars said the biggest test is when he became king. Far more hard, much more harder than being uh, conspired against by his brothers, thrown in the well, sold as a, as a slave, being uh, seduced by the uh, woman, thrown in jail for over 10 years in a sexual harassment uh, charge, actually. But the biggest test was when he became king. He, wasn't king. he was king of the United States of America, by the way. Egypt at that time is not CC's Egypt, no. That was the United States of America. It was the superpower at that time. He became there because he took his parents on the throne with him. Means he became king. So this is how you find the structure of the When you see an, an ayah like that, whoever you will, whoever you will, whoever you will, whoever you will, don't let it pass. Stop for five, ten minutes and think about it. What does it mean? Why Allah structured it like that? Of course, this means you need an I am against literalism, by the way, except in the Quran. The more literal the translation, the more it will allow you to contemplate. Though I am against literalism and everything, but with the Quran, the closer to the text, to the English, to the Arabic text, the better for you as someone going to do Tadabu. Okay? And that's actually why our some experts who have seen our our uh, translation said it's amazing, it's like robotic. It's not robotic, but I don't care what you will feel towards, is it, does it mean awkward or not, I will just put in front of you what Allah said. Okay? Uh, here, for example, Surah Al-Isra, Ayah number 31. Do not kill your children for fear of poverty. We shall provide for them and for you. Killing them is a great sin. I feel like I've seen this ayah before. Oh, there's an ayah. Close to this, I have to do some search in the Quran and I found that in Surah Al-An'am, do not kill your children because of poverty. We provide for you and for them. Killing them is a great sin. I did copy and paste, copy and paste in the same page. Do not kill your children for fear of poverty. We provide for them and for you. Do not kill your children because, not for, of poverty. We provide for you and for them, not for them and for you. Aha. Does it mean anything? Yes, of course. Do not kill your children for fear of poverty, which means you are assuming that you can become poor. The other one, do not kill your children because of poverty, is after you became poor. So when someone kills his children or aborts or whatever because he fears poverty, it is expected that he also fears that they become poor. He doesn't want them to have the hard life that he had before. So this one, Allah told him, we provide for them and for you. But the one who kills his children because he became poor is more... Uh, is someone who is actually... Um, I said, I mean, someone, yeah, more selfish than the other one. The other one, maybe he was, he was worried about his children, but this one not. This one, he kills children who are already born because he doesn't, he's, he's, he's not actually enjoying enough food. Here. So Allah told him, we provide for you and for them. You see the difference here? How Allah talks to people, uh, exercise. Yes. You want it on? Is that possible? It is possible, yes, but actually, okay. It, it makes this clearer, by the way. It makes, it, it makes the screen clearer when it's switched off. Oh, okay. Okay, let's try, let's try. Let's see. Will it make a difference? It's fine. 
Yeah. You're okay with that? Can we turn off just this one? Please. Yeah. Yes, that's good. Yeah? That's good. Fine. Fine, inshallah. Fine. Alas? Okay? Okay, fine. Uh, <coughs> Surah Abbas. Allah says, يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِيهِ لِكُلِّ امْرِئٍ مِّنْهُمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ شَأْنُ يُنِيهِ The day man will flee from his own brother, his mother, his father, his wife, his children. Each of them will be absorbed in concerns of their own on that day. I think I've seen something close to this. Some search. And I found Surah Al-Ma'arij. يَوَدُّ الْمُجْرِمُ لَوْ يَفْتَدِي مِنْ عَذَابِ يَوْمِ إِذٍ بِبَنِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَأَخِيهِ وَفَصِيلَتِهِ الَّتِي تُؤْوِيهِ وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا ثُمَّ يُنْجِيهِ The criminal will wish he could save himself from the suffering of that day by sacrificing his children, his wife, his brother, the kinsfolk who gave him shelter, and everyone on earth if it could save him. Put them next to each other. Because here there's someone missing. Compare them. The day man will flee from his own brother, his mother, his father, his wife, his children, each of them will be absorbed in concerns of their own on that day. Exactly. The parents are missing in the second one. The criminal. In the first one, every man will flee from his mother and father and children. Because he's absorbed. Every man, even good people. Even good people. But the criminal who, who sees himself already sentenced to punishment, will wish he could save himself from the suffering of that day by sacrificing. He will, he, he, he will wish that he can tell Allah to take his children instead of him to fire. To take his wife instead of him, his brother, his kinsfolk. But he will not offer his parents. Why? Because he's good? No, he's a criminal. Why? Because it angers Allah more. He can be even going to, yeah, to hell because he wasn't kind to his parents already. You understand me? It will anger Allah more to offer his parents. You understand me? But every person, every, even good people, will escape from their own parents on Judgment Day because no one is thinking of except about himself. Even in this life, we think about our children. We want to leave more for them. That's good. Save for them. But some of us exaggerate and they feel like, okay, I don't really have to spend all this sakar amount. I want to leave some for my children. Ah, this is stinginess. So you want to steal from the poor to keep for your children? Do you have a will? What did you write in the will? That everything will be uh, divided according to Sharia. Huh? But did you make something in the will for the poor? Allah allows you to make a donation up to one third of your money to the poor. Oh no, I didn't. Actually, I've been giving the poor all my life, but I want to keep this money for my children. Good. So you're still thinking about your children. On that day, you will regret that you did not make a portion for the poor. Because that day you will think about yourself. You think about yourself. Let's take an exercise. Inna hadha al-Qur'ana yahdi lillati hiya aqwam wa yubashir al-mu'mineen al-lazina ya'amaloon al-salihati أن لهم أجرا كبيرا وأن الذين لا يؤمنون بالآخرة أعتدنا لهم عذابا أليما. Indeed, this Quran guides to what is the what is most upright, and it gives good tidings, good news, 
to the believers who do good deeds that, number one, for them there is a supreme reward. And that those who do not believe in the hereafter, we have prepared for them a painful punishment. The way it is phrased means that the next good news, number two good news is that for the unbelievers, there is a painful punishment. Is this a good news for us? Do we really want people to be punished? I don't. I don't care actually. But why did Allah tell me that it's a good news for you? What does it have? <laughs> the first good news is Allah prepared for the good people a supreme reward. The second good news is the punishment that you have been spared from. So that's like a double reward. And by the way, in the, in the, in the, in the grave, when one goes into the grave, he is shown his place in paradise that he will get, inshallah, and his place in hellfire that he will not go to. So that's like a double reward. You feel more relieved. So here, when I see this on the Quran, it says, وَيُبَشِّرُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ الَّذِينَ عَمَنُوا وَأَنَّ لَهُمْ أَجْرًا كَبِيرًا وَأَنَّ It means that what comes next is also a good news. It's like a good news for us that there's a severe punishment for the unbelievers and the... It's not because we hate unbelievers. We don't care. We don't care what happens to them. But here, regarding myself, if I continue until I die being of the right faith, doing good deeds, I am also avoiding such severe punishment. So these are the subtle uh, meanings that may not appear for you. <sighs> Look at this. I want you to try to find or try to imagine the timeline that I will read now. Has there come upon man a period of time when he was nothing to be mentioned? We created man from a liquid mixture to test him, and we made him hearing and seeing. We guided him to the way, be he appreci appreciative or, or denier of grace. We have prepared for the deniers chains and yokes and a searing fire, but the truly righteous will drink from a cup whose mixture is comfort. Have you seen the timeline? Has there come upon man a period of time when he was nothing to be mentioned before creation? We created man from a liquid mixed mixture to test him during creation. And we made him hearing and seeing during life. We guided him to the way, be he appreciative or a denier, your actions during life and your beliefs during life. We have prepared for the deniers chains and yokes and searing fire. This is in the hereafter. But the truly righteous will drink from a cup whose mixture is come for, for in the uh, uh, hereafter. So, in four or five ayat, you have been taken in a journey through time from before creation, during creation, during life and your lifetime, and then the hereafter, whether you will be here or there. In fact, I am. Wow. It's beautiful. These subtle thing, meanings, you cannot contemplate, you cannot realize, except when you, you give it some time and contemplate. I want go through this because there's only like five minutes or six minutes left or seven minutes left. We can give like, if you want to ask quick questions, go ahead. We have six minutes left. Do you want to ask any question? In your opinion, how long would it take to study the Quran, contemplate and study? How many years? How long would it take to study the Quran, contemplate and study? How many years? Forever. The Quran is amazing. And the amazing thing about it is that Every time you read, you get something new. Every time you read, you see something different. Every time you read, you discover something. No matter what your education level is, no matter what your intellectual level is, books 
usually are for a certain education level, suitable for a certain age. That's not the Quran. It deals with old people. Would you think if someone wanted to study the Quran, that they study the Arabic language and from there to know what the beautiful meanings are? I've learned the Quran in Arabic. I'm trying to teach my children to in, 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 in English so they can understand the meaning. Yeah. the beauty of knowing what the words contain. Definitely, the Arabic language is very important for those who will read the Quran in Arabic or who can do that. If you have the chance to do that. But until we do that, people living in the West who don't know Arabi are just deserting the Quran completely. And many people I have seen here in this country learn Arabi and they read everything but they don't understand. So they learn only how to put the letters next to each other and they read the Quran and they have no clue what it means. I've seen someone like that who has been reading every day for about an hour and she never read a translation, not even once. She told me, I have no clue what this book, book talks about. She said, why are you reading for one hour every day? She said, to bring Barakah to my life. So Barakah, for some people, means good luck. Like putting a, uh, a, a shoe uh, horn uh, on the, uh, on the uh, horse shoe horn on the door to bring good luck. Some people see the Quran like that, an amulet. No, the Barakah is in understanding and contemplating. That's the Barakah. In taking it as instructions to be dealt with seriously. This is what the Barakah is. Okay. Yes? For the youngsters, um, to teach your children, how would you recommend that they become like this level, even though it's basically very impressive? No, youngsters, I have an episode on Islamophobia 2 series. If you go, I have. Uh, several channels on the we have five channels actually. One of them is called Islamophobia TV. On Islamophobia TV uh, uh, series two, I think there is an uh, as, uh, an episode called How to Teach the Quran to Children. Completely different. It's something very nice, mashallah. Children love what stories and games. I will show you how to teach the Quran to children through stories and games. You can make games. Well, yes. On that channel, Islamophobia TV. Subscribe to it, and also there is there is the this episode which is very important uh, called "How to Teach Quran to Children." Okay. Let's go now. Uh, okay. Actually, last question. Just do you recommend uh, for us to read uh, tafsir or listen to tafsir to enable like high reflection? Yes, but not during contemplation. Ah. Contemplation, it's a personal experience with the Quran. But if you know that you're gonna like read in Surah Al-Nur today, read the Tafsir of Surah Al-Nur first. After you finish it, leave the Tafsir away and deal with the Quran back. Okay?